The time for war has not yet come, but it will come, and that soon. And when it does come, my advice is to draw the sword and throw away the scabbard. General Thomas Jonathan Stonewall Jackson, speech to the cadets at the Virginia Military Institute, March 1861. Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we'll be talking about Hoax Run at Falling Waters, West Virginia, Berkeley County, July 2nd, 1861. On July 2nd, 1861, U.S. Brigadier General Irving McDowell ordered U.S. Major General Robert Patterson to take his 18,000 men and trap Confederate Brigadier General Joseph Johnston and his 11,000 men in the Shenandoah Valley. The goal was to keep Johnston from reinforcing Pierre G.T. Beauregard's men. Yes, that same General Beauregard. Patterson crossed the Potomac River near Williamsport, Maryland, and marched along the Valley Pike to Martinsburg. As he neared Hoax Run, the brigades of U.S. Colonel John J. Abercrombie and George H. Thomas encountered Confederate Colonel Thomas J. Jackson's regiment. Yes, that is Stonewall Jackson to all of us later in history. Colonel Thomas J. Jackson's 1st Brigade of the Confederate Army of the Shenandoah was stationed just north of Martinsburg. When he learned that the Union Army had crossed Potomac, he ordered one regiment to strike camp, three other regiments to stay in reserve, and a 5th Virginia regiment to advance, with one piece of artillery towards the enemy. The 5th Virginia was about 380 men strong and would be facing between 2,000 and 3,500 Union troops. Jackson was aware they would not win. Their job was to slow down the Union troops. Both armies met at the intersection of Hammond Mill Road and the Valley Turnpike Road to Martinsville on the William Rush Porterfield Farm. The farmhouse was a large log structure built by the grandfather of Tennessee Congressman and Alamo defender David Crockett. The 5th Virginia was able to slow the Union forces for about 45 minutes. At this point, Union forces moved up four cannons and tried to surround the Confederate forces. The Confederates slowly retreated about one mile and then broke off the action, moving their forces back to Winchester. At this time, Confederate Colonel Ashby and his men appeared out of the woods. They were dressed in blue blouses and appeared to look like Union troops. They rode up to the Union skirmishers who had mistaken them for Union cavalry. Colonel Ashby ordered the Union skirmishers to let down the fence into the farm. After the Union troops did this, Ashby and his men rode into the field and surrounded, surrounded those Union troops. They shot the Union first sergeant and demanded the surrender of the remaining Union troops. Yep, that seems pretty tricky to me as well, guys. Pretty smart move. Even though Union forces won, General Patterson was convinced that the Confederate forces were more than 10 times the size of their actual army. With that estimate, Patterson ordered his men to move to Bunker Hill instead of advancing to Winchester to help stop Johnston's forces. On July 15th, Patterson retreated back to Harper's Ferry with no more engagements. This allowed Johnston to move his men to Manassas and help General Beauregard's defense against Union forces. After the battle, Patterson would receive an honorable discharge and mustered out of the army by the end of July 1861. Colonel Jack Jackson would be promoted to Brigadier General for his handling of the action at Hoax Run. The battle was the first fought within the Shenandoah Valley and marked the first effective use of cavalry forces and mass troop movements in the war. The estimated casualties were 73 U.S. casualties and 25 Confederate soldiers. Join us next time as we cover the Battle of Blackburn's Ford.